Hey guys, Molten here. So over the past few weeks, I've been trying out the move 1B3 in a lot of my Blitz games online, and I've noticed that a lot of players keep falling into the exact same opening traps over and over again. I've managed to catch out a lot of players, including very strong opposition. So today I'm going to be sharing with you my top two favorite opening traps, including one novelty trap at the very end of the video. So stick around to then. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys very soon. So the first two traps on this list work really well against King's Indian players because of the move order involved. After knight f6, white plays bishop b2, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, e3, castles and the move pawn to d4 right away. Here a very natural response for black is to attack the white center with the move pawn to c5 with the idea that if white captures the pawn then black will play the move queen to a5 check and recapture on c5. However in this particular case Black can't actually win the pawn back because white can play the move pawn to c3. And next move will play the move pawn to b4, but the main idea is that if black takes on c5, white will throw in this nice bishop to a3, very unexpected move, where black can not actually defend the pawn on e7. And here the queen can only go to two squares on c7 or on a5. If the queen goes back to c7, then we can capture the pawn on e7, the rook goes to e8, we capture the knight, bishop takes, and then we can just play the move knight to d4 to block all threats on the c3 pawn, and white will maintain a healthy pawn advantage after knight c6, we can just follow up with bishop e2. If instead black plays the move queen to a5, then again we can take the pawn on e7, rook to e8, again capture the knight, bishop captures, and then White has many options in this position, but the simplest I can find is to play bishop to c4, which stops all ideas of d5 by black. And here if black captures the pawn, we can just capture back. And after queen takes, we can even just play king e2 here. And it looks a bit strange of a move, but it's working fine for white because all end games here, once we trade off, will have a lot of play along the open d and c files. And we can give the pawn back and just get a slightly better position here. We can even just trade queen straight away with queen to d2. And this is a perfect end game for white. Likewise, if black tries to keep queens on with queen f6, we can play the move rook h to d1, followed by queen to d6 next move. And we can artificially cast our king with king f1, king g1. So white is doing very well here. So the second trap might seem a little bit obvious, but you don't know how many people have actually fallen into it. After knight f6, bishop b2, g6, knight f3. So this time after d4, black is not going to blunder, but instead play the move pawn to d6. Bishop to e2, knight d7, castles, rook e8, c4, and a very natural response for black here is to play the move pawn to e5. White will capture, and black should play the move knight to g4 here and then recapture the pawn on e5 without any problems. But a lot of players, unexpected, will just answer with the natural d takes e5. And here white can play a very surprising knight takes e5, capturing the pawn. If black takes, then we trade queens, and then we take the knight, just a healthy pawn up. And if black tries any tricks with the move knight to e4, trying to utilize this pin, then white can play the move knight to d3, simultaneously unpinning and defending our bishop and offering a trade at the same time. Here white is just um, a pawn up and doing very, very well. So last trap on this list is a pretty funny one. And as far as I know, it's a novelty and it's never been played before. It's slightly far-fetched, but I've managed to get it once in an online blitz game. So I was introduced to the idea first by playing one of my good friends, Junta Ikeda, and he played the move pawn to b3 in this position. I played the move pawn to a5, um, just to get an interesting position, and after the game, he found out that he could play the move pawn to e4 here, and after a4, instead of playing bishop to b2 and allowing a trade of rooks, he suggested this idea of bishop to a3, to try and block the A file with a poisonous threat if black 
casually just takes the pawn on b3. We capture back. And here in one of my online blitz games, my opponents didn't actually see the threat and played the move pawn to e6. After which we can actually just capture the bishop apart from the move bishop e7, which also wins. But capturing the bishop is nice because after rook takes, we can play the move bishop takes g7, fian kettowing our bishop on our opponent's side instead and hitting both the rooks in the corner. So that's a nice little trick. And after the move knight to c6, White also has a winning move, of course. Bishop takes e7, hitting the queen and hitting the rook. So that last one might require a little bit of cooperation from your opponents, but it's very unlikely they will have seen this idea before. So if you manage to get any of these traps in your own games, do feel free to leave a comment below letting me know how it went. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one. See you soon.